true facts. Some of them aren't. If some wisdom has left Holland in ruins, if you repeat the words medulla oblongata long enough over and over, you will collapse to the ground and hear the sound of the first drum developed by Homo erectus man. When Oscar Wilde lay on his deathbed, penniless and disgraced in a cheap boarding house in France, he stared dimly to the window and muttered, those curtains are absolutely horrendous. One of us had simply got to go. <laughs> he then sank into the pillow, shut his eyes, and died. That's a true one. If Angela Lansbury sneezed while swimming underwater, it would take exactly one second for the sound to travel one mile and be heard by, say, a sea otter or pilot whale. Though they have tried to squash the facts, there is enduring evidence that when Wallace Stevens died, an unspecified number of blackbirds flew through the windows of the mortuary where he lay, removed his eyeballs with their beaks, and flew away, carrying both eyes to the Florida Keys, depositing them softly into the green water above the coral reef. Female as thunder, the air filled with thought, felony, drainage. Saints followed Christ in tears. I followed a woman on 8th Avenue today. It was the color of her hair, ginger and Merovingian, thick, percussion, gentle, like shaking dry vanilla beans. It shivered on her head, <coughs> down her neck, all the way to the 7th century. This is also called poem. Vertigo, discord, and certain trees form a matrix for all alphabets. Each letter is true, every word false. Over there in that cabinet, there's a salamander which I mentioned with her entourage of fireflies. Ask your question the moment I open those doors. Then stand back quickly, she answers with flames and don't dare underestimate the distance of her fire. Now, this is called our uh, train surfing. Actually, this is on the record, and it's one of my favorite um, of the spoken word pieces. I mean, the, mu the music is. The Um, I'm surfing the top, uh, I, I guess I should preface it a bit, that some guy wanted me to write a film, um, you know, a script for a film, for, uh, about these kids who train surf, and these like abandoned homeless kids that the death squad kills in, in Brazil, you know, in Rio. Um, to say train surf on, stop, on top of these bullet trains, and he showed me, brought that footage that he showed me, you know. I never wound up doing the thing, but um, it was great seeing the footage. Um, I'm surfing atop a bullet train, surfing along the equatorial line at 90 miles per hour, surfing through the rainforest, through the tin shack terraces of the suburbs of Brazil. The faster we move, the better. I have made the vow to be decapitated by sudden wires in the air or swept away by the trickster winds of Exu Elijiba, who surfs beside me, tattooed into my flesh, not by ink, but by fire, the god of the crossroads, Exu, the messenger god, the god of the railroads, who laughs, as do I, at the commuters beneath in their seats. They hear me stomping above, testing the speed and sharp turns. I know. When I return to the city, all that awaits me are the tunnels where we crawl to sleep, or the public parks with their clean breeze of tyranny, and soldiers on patrol, 
and all the faces turned away because we were forgotten before we were known. When I return to the city, the only thing that awaits me is midnight and the death squad, an expanding bullet in my brain. Determine the next day's weather pattern. Tomorrow it will rain, then heat lightning by evening. Every time the telephone rings, a green sea turtle dies, and a phlegmatic guilt chants across your day. The side of your head where you caught your hair dictates the direction the trees lean left or right in the yard out back. A poor Mexican teenager in the Texas panhandle is suffering from a venereal disease, and as he urinates in his bathroom, the pain is too much to bear, so he smashes his closed fist into the plaster, leaving a hole there, and he discovers a hidden shelf within the wall filled with stacks of $50 bills left behind by a drug dealer, perhaps, who parted it in haste. And so he is rich for a lifetime because of pain and urine. <laughs> a blonde woman with a silver tongue stud and gold rings above her left eye lights a cigarette with a candle in the VIP lounge of a club in Minneapolis. And the candle drips wax to the red carpet, somehow causing a lone fisherman on an upstate lake to slip on some odd substance, falling overboard and drowned, eventually eaten by his own propeller, while a child from the lake tribe kneeling in his canoe watches in distance and mist, unable to do a thing for him, he mutters, that poor man, and paddles through the reeds, skimming the surface with a plank, continuing to harvest wild rice from the surface of Glacier Lake. A popular character actress who moves her emerald brooch after a banquet to raise money for the twin benefits of Los Angeles runaways and the Dalai Lama's return to Tibet. By her simple actions on doing the clasp of the brooch, the Dalai Lama stubs his left foot on a cabinet in his room at the San Francisco Zen Center's guest house, 800 miles up the coastline, causing a long among the Roshi and initiates, and a marlin blue swelling on the big toe of the gentle lama who meditates the pain to Maya. While in a cluttered shop in the thin streets of Milan, Italy, its floor filthy with rosewood shavings, the air cramped with oak dust, the man who built the cabinet on which the Dalai Lama's foot was stubbed slumps over his workbench with a cerebral hemorrhage. He is dead. It has been growing a long while in his mind. It was simply a matter of time. And a young Norwegian film student thoughtlessly decides to title a short film, it was simply a matter of time. Though it has nothing to do with time, nor the dead Italian cabinet maker. A mosquito sucks the blood of a post-Soviet Baltic girl, and she falls in love with a balding Armenian who assures her that only girls with strong sexual drives are chosen by these insects. The mosquito dies and provides a small meal to a starving bird. That bird's song awakes me in New York City at 5 a.m., and I shiver with a sudden sense of dread because the mosquito which it ate was poisoned by the blood of the girl which it bit because she was imbibed with lies and designer drugs. And so the bird sings off key as it draws me from sleep and the room is folding over darker as I rise and I know the change is coming and bad and soon writing this poem. <laughs> 